how concerned should Canadians be about these privacy breaches and what's the government doing to make sure they don't keep happening? From the foyer tonight, I'm joined by Adam Vaughan, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister. Aaron O'Toole is the Public Safety Critic for the Official Opposition. And Daniel Blakey is the Deputy Ethics Critic for the NDP. Good to see you all, gentlemen. Good to be here. Adam Vaughan, let me start with you. Um, and let's be clear on what we're talking about here. Let's start with, uh, with metadata and uh, that issue. Um, metadata that could include telephone numbers or email addresses, but not the content of any of those kinds of communications. Uh, how concerned should Canadians be about the fact that this information was being shared with some of Canada's allies? And uh, how much do we need to worry about this? Well, it's a significant concern, and the good news is that no information that could identify a particular Canadian was shared. The other good news is that as soon as the breach was identified by uh, people involved in, in the agency, it was immediately stopped, immediately reported, and, and, uh, and remedy was put in place to stop this information from, from being shared, and, and, and no information has been shared since. And in fact, the program is in, is in effectively a standstill right now until we get the proper safety precautions in place. And the minister himself has said, as he said today, uh, when he made the disclosure that until he is satisfied that safety and, and Canadian civil liberties are being protected, um, this program will not go forward. I must also say that, that the, the choice to disclose this information, as soon as the minister became aware, even though it happened two years ago before our government was in power, as soon as the minister became aware, he reported through Parliament to Canadians to make sure they knew that their okay. civil liberties were being protected. Mr. O'Toole, uh, is this a major privacy concern for Canadians? Uh, this is a concern, absolutely, and it's a, it's a demonstration that the Commissioner, uh, the CSC, ha and the establishment itself has identified a challenge they have, which is with the volume of digital communications. Um, they haven't been able to strip out all elements of the metadata they, they need to. Um, as was said by Mr. Vaughan, uh, they, th there's no personal information there that would identify Canadians, but they didn't strip the level of metadata right. that they wanted, and this is something that has been a challenge for them over the last couple of years, and they've addressed it. They have not been sharing it in, uh, in that period, and the Minister has confirmed that until they have uh, confidence in being able to strip uh, all the data, they, they won't be sharing. So this, this is important because it, it is part of our public security, but I think it's a demonstration that uh, this has been flagged, it will be addressed, and until it is, there, there, won't, be, uh, there won't be sharing uh, without the assurances okay. needed. Mr. Blakey, what are your thoughts on this? Well, um, you know, I think what's interesting about this is that it raises the question of Canadians' confidence in their, in their security agencies to kind of get the balance of security and privacy right. Um, one of the things we were raising in the House today had to do with the sale of Allstream to a U.S. company and, and the new government's failure to implement a, uh, national, a national security review of that sale. It was something that when Allstream was going to be sold a number of years ago, even the Conservative government did that um, on their due uh, diligence and decided not to proceed with that sale. So what we see in this report is just how easy it is, even inadvertently, to pass on information and now we're in a position where, to uh, the where a foreign company is going to be handling a lot of sensitive to, 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 uh, to correct, federal government information. To correct the record, that sale was reviewed and it was deemed to be compliant with the existing laws uh, that protect uh, Canadians and, and, and their information when transactions like that take place. So it's, it, it's, it would be wrong to say it wasn't reviewed. It was reviewed. Okay, well, it was fine. Well, as part of the general system. package, but there wasn't a particular... Well, okay security review no, done and so when you're asking people to no. trust you that you're it getting was, it right it okay. was reviewed and is compliant with the law well let, let me talk about uh, some questions here about uh, about compliance and following the rules uh, what's supposed to happen uh, mr. Vaughn with that uh, mega data is that uh, before that information uh, gets shared it's supposed to be and I think mr. O'Toole referred to it and alluded to it it's supposed to be what's called minimized that's the term rendered unidentifiable before it's shared with the allies and that wasn't happening, uh, and it's taken uh, two years for the oversight process. Uh, you, it, it was captured, uh, but it's taken two years for the oversight process to reveal publicly that it wasn't happening. And, and is, isn't that the bigger issue here? That's I agree. You know, for two years, this this was an issue. We're finding out about it now. I, I agree. I mean, for Canadians to have confidence that their civil liberties and public safety are appropriately being balanced and that both are being protected by their government, um, disclosure of this sort should be immediate. Uh, as soon as the minister responsible found out, uh, he, he immediately went to Parliament with this report and immediately made it public. I can't explain why the previous government didn't do it, but that's the behavior of this government because we believe in transparency. We also believe in more rigorous oversight. It's one of the 
the reasons my colleague David McGinty has been appointed to construct a parliamentary committee for, so that we have even stronger civilian oversight uh, so the reporting is not only done more quickly publicly but where there are sensitive security okay. issues it can be done with the proper security oversight in camera uh, in, with, so, so that we don't compromise public safety as we review uh, the, the, the impact on civil liberties. Mr. O'Toole, it, 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 what, what about that issue that this has been going, this has been a problem uh, about this metadata for a couple of years. We haven't shared it with the Allies since 2014, but we're finding it about a problem today that's been a problem inside that organization for a couple of years, at least. Um, th this is a problem that was identified by the organization and was being dealt with. And as, as you said, as Mr. Vaughan has confirmed, there was no sharing done at all. So I, I think this is a case where the commissioner uh, and the agency did, did their job, which was to make sure that there were zero risks when it came to sharing the potential personal uh, information of Canadians. Um, I think why these two reports are, are being tabled today, Peter, is they're the prelude to what is going to be a major overhaul of our security intelligence uh, apparatus. Um, in other countries that I think Mr. Goodell is going to showcase as a, as a guide to us, all parties work together on that. In fact, the chair is not picked by the Prime Minister like Mr. McGinty was. It's done in a consensus basis in most countries. So in for this committee of parliamentarians that they're planning on building, They've already not reached out to the other parties. They're doing things behind closed doors. So these stories today, both released today, is really the, the, the cover uh, for two things. The okay. Security Intelligence no. Committee and the All Stream Questions for the okay. no, 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 Before let, you can sail a ship, you've got to build a ship. We have started the process and, and, and going I'm still forward. I'm waiting okay, for my phone call. Okay, well, it, going forward, there will be a process that, that, that brings and the, the and parliamentary and, oversight. And Mr. Blakey, should reach out. Okay, Mr. Yeah. Blakey, the government is promising there'll be uh, 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 an improvement or changes certainly to the oversight of national security agencies. Um, what role should politicians be playing in that? Because that keeps coming up. Should there be a, a, a broad a more, uh, a, 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 a more of an oversight involving members such as yourself, elected members of parliament. Well, I think Mr. O'Toole is right that having a kind of broad all-party uh, uh, effort that's not just sort of, you know, the, the uh, prime minister picking whoever is going to oversee it, but is genuinely all-party from, from its inception mm -hmm. is a move in the right direction in terms of citizen oversight. What it won't do is replace the need for for actual oversight, which is you know uh, real time uh, watching of our of our of our of our agency, so that things aren't left out for two years. It's actually the SIRC report that makes that distinction very clearly and helpfully between review and oversight. The fact is, we don't have much oversight right now. We have review mechanisms, and that's and and that's what generated these reports that we're discussing today. But those are always with hindsight. Those are always after the fact. What we also need the uh, government to do is to reinstitute a, a genuine and meaningful oversight process. A parliamentary committee may be another good review process that adds another lens, but it's not going to be a uh, okay. substitute for so, oversight. So, so, a couple, so, couple of minutes left here. Uh, Mr. Vaughn, yeah. uh, we also have the report today from the Security Intelligence Review Committee, and uh, we've touched on it briefly here, uh, revealing that uh, the spy agency obtained taxpayer information from Revenue Canada without a warrant and on a number of different occasions. And when that was discovered, they told everyone in authority they had deleted it, but in fact had not. Uh, how, should, how worried should we be about that, and, and how do you stop that? Look, if, if you don't have strong civilian oversight, it's, it's very hard to, 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 to make that determination. It's one of the reasons why we're committed, not to a parliamentary committee, but a committee of parliamentarians uh, that, that will give us uh, the advice we need to do both the in-time and, and in real-time oversight, but also the parliamentary oversight. Civilian oversight of our security apparatus is the cornerstone of a strong democracy, and we are committed to not only being transparent and accountable, as you saw today with the release of this information, but to also act to make sure that parliamentarians and Canadians have confidence that the proper review and the proper conduct of our security agencies is taking place while at the same time we take every measure possible okay. to protect public safety. Mr. O'Toole, this, is, but this is a work in progress but we have to move these yardsticks quickly and with great determination and clarity so that Canadians have confidence and we remain safe. Mr. O'Toole, when, when the Conservatives were in government there were lots of calls for a change to the oversight mechanisms of these uh, security agencies mm -hmm. and uh, your government resisted it. Do you still feel the same way today? Well look, I'm, I, I've really been hoping that Minister 
Mr. Goodale was going to do, what our allies do when they've changed to this parliamentary function, reach out, make it not partisan, not a secret appointment process, because I'm not uh, opposed no, 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 in, in but general. Your, but your government always said that the existing oversight mechanism was just fine. The, the, I think the report today, Peter, kind of shows that CERC was on this issue. Not only did they make sure that the CRA information was not an isolated incident, they've actually looked into some of the management problems at CSIS that allowed that data to, to remain on their servers. So this was CERC, which is a civilian oversight expert, non-politician, so no politics in it. CERC was actually a recommendation of the McDonald Commission from the last Trudeau government. So we have to show not just Parliament, but Canadians, why we think politicians should be involved in the process. And do you think they should? I, I think there can be a role. I'm not, I'm not opposed to it. What I'm concerned is the minister hasn't reached out to the other parties. This is supposed to be weeks. beyond politics. It's been 10 weeks we're reaching out. <laughs> not yet. I, I just saw you reach out there, Adam. The chair is now named you reached already. out and you it's touched them, even. Yeah. <laughs> the chair has okay. been named already, is what I'm saying. So it seems like you, you Daniel think it's skewed going to be in set advance, up right? and we're going to no. be invited. Uh, all, right, oh, all right, Mr. Blakey, let, let me Rest give... Rest assured that it, that process is underway and you'll be talked to soon. Okay, later. Mr. Blakey, let, let me get you in here. Uh, you, uh, you feel there absolutely needs to be a role for politicians or not so much? Well, I, I think there can be. For me, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about today's reports because I think they show that the kinds of concerns that the NDP was raising about expanded powers under, under C-51 and the answer being, well, just trust us, we're not going to give the extra oversight. Uh, it shows that, that, that those concerns are real, that there are things going on that we do need to be concerned about, that we do need at, at, uh, the adequate oversight for. Um, so we would still like to see C-51 uh, just taken off the books, um, and I think uh, to, and 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 today's reports show why you can't have a process where extraordinary powers are given without the adequate oversight. All right, uh, all right. Appreciate you, gentlemen. Uh, good conversation tonight. We'll uh, see where this story takes us. Appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you, you very much.